Uh, we're on part three, girls and their moms. So this is part three, girls and their parents. So chapter 12, girls and their moms. There's one fact about raising a girl that nobody disagrees with, and that is the, cert the centrality of mothers. The reason for this is simple. A mother is the role model, the person of the same gender who has the most effect from the earliest time for 95% of girls. A stay-at-home dad could be the main caregiver and have a huge effect. A stay-at-home dad could be the main caregiver and have a huge effect. A substitute aunt or grandmother might step in for a mom who can't be there. But for most girls, mom is the person who teaches them what, it's meant, what it means to be a woman. That's an awesome thing. A girl might, at different times, adore her mom or hate her, admire her, criticize her. Usually in the 20 years of growing up, they will do all of the above, but however it goes, no daughter ever says her mother wasn't hugely important. Long after you are gone, your daughter will remember your smile and your touch, what you taught her and how you made her feel. She will pass all this on in the way she loves her children, and that love will go on down the generations. And as you can see, my mom's mom was not a good mother, and you can see how my mom turned out. How role modeling works. When you think about it, what children have to learn while growing up is incredibly complex. It's not just things like riding a bike or ballet. Everything we have, we do has to be learned. How to be patient, how to give orders, how to argue with the husband amicably so he really gets what you're saying. How to use humor to keep spirits up when exhausted. How to love. These are not things you can learn from books. We learn to be human from watching other humans with Without role models, we would be clueless in our lives and possibly hard. People without good role models often end up in trouble or in jail. Support workers for mothers at risk often find that they have simply never seen someone discipline a child kindly, only pinch them, lock them in a closet, or slap them on the face. They literally did not know there was another way. The brains of children are wired to watch and copy. Special networks of nerves called mirror neurons link our eyes and our muscles so we observe what others do and take into our own behavior without even knowing it. You will notice you have mannerisms that your mother or father had. That's your mirror neurons at work. This is why each child becomes like the people they grow up around. Musicians create musicians, gardeners or animal lovers create a new generation of the same. If your kids love you, they will want to be like you. So, so brace yourself. You know where this is going, don't you? Your daughter is going to turn into you, plus whatever other role models or extra ingredients she can add to improve on the basic model. She will carry you inside her. If you can be your best self as a mother, then she will get the best start. She will take in the very best you have to give. Being a stepmom. One third of all moms today are stepmoms. That's crazy. One third, stepmothering a daughter is a generous and beautiful act because the love and closeness has to grow from scratch. Stepmothers tell me that the secret is not is in not forcing oneself on a daughter who doesn't who didn't choose you and may have powerful feelings of both loyalty and loss toward her biological mom. Don't aim to replace her, but to grow a new relationship alongside her. Trust and into in, trust and intimacy take time. Stepchildren have to come to you on an emotional level. Be calm. Be kind and love will grow. Throughout history, millions of kids have found additional or different mothers from the ones they were born to. Nobody needs to get less. A girl needs lots of love. And the more role, the more role models in her life, the better off she is. Cleaning up your act. So let's get practical. What are the ways in which your role modeling might lead her to get a good or a bad start? Cast a quick glance over your life. Are you able to get along with men or is that a disaster area in your life? Do you know how to make and keep good friends? Do you know how to relax? Do you know how to keep your promises? Do you know how to keep going when the road is hard and long? She can learn these things from you. There are other more everyday things we show our daughters inadvertently. Stress is a big one. In my talk called Secrets of Happy Children, I tell parents a rather stunning thing. Your child cannot be more relaxed than you. That's because at least in the early years, their level of stress rises and falls on the levels of their moms and dads and anyone else nearby. They are like a cork bobbing about on the waves of their moms and dads' stress levels. Even newborn babies know about this. I once worked with a family in therapy who brought their baby along in a bassinet. The baby, the baby would vomit every time they got to a certain difficult topic. The rest of the hour it was peaceful but very alert. Stress may seem difficult to control, but with help you can learn how to calm your body even in tough situations. 
Pregnancy is a great time to start a yoga relaxation or meditation class, easiest to learn from someone you like. Your mirror neurons will help you. A tape or DVD is next best. A book is helpful, but you will have to really be determined. Every day you can choose how stressful you want your life to be and your daughter will observe and learn from you. The way you drive is a classic example. If you, if you yell at other drivers, curse them for going slowly, drive up close behind them, make racist comments, or even just tap your fingers anxiously on the wheel, your daughter sees that. Sometimes we have no idea how dangerous our children perceive our driving to be. My daughter told, my daughter told her mom that she didn't want to drive with me. My driving style is not fast, it's actually way too relaxed. I leave it to the last minute to change lanes, do creative U-turns, and depend on my amazing ability to back into parking spots. It was scaring her witless. I had to develop a whole new approach to driving because I really wanted her to feel safe with me. Girls watch their moms and dads for the way they treat other people. If they are kind to others, if they volunteer for things, belong to community groups, stop and help someone who looks lost or distressed on a sidewalk. Having kids means keeping a check on our emotions. They are often really frightened by unexplained intensity. We need to be moderate ourselves because they are little and vulnerable, something we easily forget. We can have and show our feelings, but not to be overwhelmed by them. Each gender has risk factors, and boys, it can be arrogance. With daughters, though, we have to guard against setting an example of martyrdom. A martyr, a martyr is someone who doesn't put their own needs into the equation. Our girls need to see us taking a healthy interest in our own activities our own health, our own creative time, our own spirit. Otherwise, how would they ever learn to do the same? Maximizing your example. You can magnify your role modeling in one simple way by explaining why you do things. Girls listen to what we say even before they can speak by explaining our choices and actions. They get a mental, they get a mental map of why people act the way they do. People who act badly often do because they're not thinking much. They simply react emotionally to everything that comes along. People who act well have usually figured out some guidelines for living and that helps them choose. So share your reasons with your daughter. One example might be striving to understand the motives of others. A person is speeding, but perhaps it's an emergency or they're having a bad day. Hopefully they'll be okay. An important thing to teach your kids is that there is a long-term and short-term. Finishing your schoolwork is hard when you would rather be swimming or playing computer games, but it's better to finish it so you can really relax. By high school, the idea can be absorbed that if you want a job that is fun, pays well, and where other people don't boss you around, you need some qualifications. So it's worth putting in a bit of effort and passing everything in high school and so on. Explain your values to your kids that it's good to take care of yourself, but also to be caring for others, that it really helps if people keep their agreements that most situations can be solved with some compromise, that everyone's voice counts, that honesty is better in the long run. They might roll their eyes, but you will see them adopting your philosophy a day or two later or with their friends when you aren't even around. So ask yourself, what are the core beliefs that you live your life by? Be sure to let your daughter know. Letting go. If all goes well, mothers and daughters end up being lifelong friends. However, in the late teens, some distance is necessary if they are to grow and become themselves. Also, they need to have other role models in their life. Recognizing th this means we can avoid clinging to them and taking this distancing personally. It can be hard, but our kids do need space. Mickey Frost, a mother in northern New South Wales, Australia, told me this story. My best friend's 17-year-old daughter stays with us overnight once a week. The other morning when she left for school, I went with her to the front door, helped her with some of her things, kissed her goodbye, and wished her a good day. She said in a jubilant and excited voice, but you are so sweet. You take me to the door, help me, and kiss me goodbye. My mother will never do that. She just calls bye from inside the house, and then I leave. I wish she would kiss me goodbye. I went inside and mused over that for a while. The fact of the matter is that my friend's daughter is my substitute daughter. I would love to accompany my own 16-year-old girl to the door kiss her goodbye and with all my heart wish her a good day however she would hate that i surmise from this that no matter what mothers do with their teenage daughters the daughters appear to want the opposite that is whatever they don't get or have why from how i see it this is part of the natural separation process my daughter would think i was babying her she would think i thought her incapable of getting herself out the door and she would not want my kisses i used to do all that and she used to lap it up not anymore. She has to develop and form herself as an individual without her mother, me, doing what I did when she was little. And although I have known my friend's daughter since she was a baby, I am not her mother, so she has no need or desire to separate from me. She can, without any emotional dilemmas, enjoy my care and love for her. 
I told my friend how her daughter responded to me. My friend will now take her daughter to the door in the morning and kiss her goodbye. My bet is that within a week, her daughter will push her away and say, leave me be, how old do you think I am? Time will tell. Home as a haven. Something I have learned from great parents is worth passing on. It's good to look at the whole vibe in your house, the emotional atmosphere that you as parents create for everyone to live in. The big world outside is stressful. Schools are often way too big and anonymous. The school day is hurried, nerves get jangled and frayed. Often our towns are grimy and strangers who don't care much about us all around. Some kids even have to deal with hostility or violence. There's very little natural space in our lives to be quiet with nature the wind and sky and water. Because of all of this, we need for home to be peaceful and safe. The need for home to be peaceful and safe is essential, especially for girls whose senses are fine-tuned to the, to the nuances of sensory inputs all around them. So it really helps that home is a calm place. It doesn't mean that you don't have some fun TV on straight after school for half an hour to chill out or some music, but notice the temperature. Is it peaceful or jangling? Do you welcome the children home, give them some food and drink, and encourage them to unwind or pile on some demands and rush about yourself? Routine and structure suits children. They know what it. Routine and structure suits children. They know what is what and can be more free and creative because they don't have to be hyper vigilant. Here are some other things that help. Shared meals at fixed times where everyone sits at a table and there is no TV really helps. There was even research to show this. Set bedtimes and set times to get ready for bed and for activities that lead to bedtime, like baths or showers, story reading or reading time for leisure before they fall asleep. An electronic blackout around bedtime, phones should be left on their chargers in the kitchen not under the pillow to bother them with playground politics late into the night. Seasonal rituals that are exciting within a large family circle and the buzz of being in a large group where they still belong and matter. Silly games like Pictionary or family concerts and talent quests among the extended family to help people be playful across all generations. Great celebrations of birthdays, not expensive, but with time and effort and some care to make it something the kids really remember. One-to-one -one time with just mom or just dad and daughter, such as a weekend away from, or a weekend away once a term, just the two of you where you sleep, cook, do activities, and speak with nobody else, no partner, no other siblings so she can actually feel your 100% care for her and store this in her memory banks. Visits and sleepovers with favorite aunts or grandparents, again, to have that one-to-one -one opportunity. Family holidays where everyone can chill out, avoid expensive resorts where some bored young adults run kids clubs. And parents don't get any closer to the children than they do during the rest of the year. Often holidays are the times children remember as the most special in their lives because they saw their parents actually relaxed and happy and glad to be with them. An annual cleanup of unwanted clothes, books, and toys, perhaps at the start of the new school year to make their room spacious, clean, and new, and to give stuff to where it can help someone. This has been a broad sweep of ideas, and I hope some of them have captured your imagination. Motherhood carries some natural grief. Your children are headed out into the big world, and the better you raise them, the further they may go. But despite the distance, kids raised with love grow closer and closer to their mothers. Your place in their hearts will always be as if you were standing right beside them. A great film about mothers. You might have heard of a movie called Spanglish with Adam Sandler and Paz Vega in the lead roles. Often mis mistaken for a comedy and overlooked, this wonderful film about a Mexican mother and daughter coming to live with a wealthy American family tells a powerful story about mother mothering girls. The values of the two cultures are sharply in contrast. In one, possessions, fashion, and shopping are how, to, uh, how love is shown, and this puts deep down pressure on everyone, and the other loyalty, effort, and being true to yourself are what matters most. In the opening sequences, the American mother buys her daughter clothes one size too small to motivate her to lose weight. The daughter's excitement at seeing the clothes turns to bitter disappointment, and the scene is set for some real learning. The Mexican daughter and the American daughter are touching to watch, are touching to watch as they struggle with growing up. The contrast between how daughters are raised in each culture is very enlightening. The movie ends with an unforgettable quote from the Mexican daughter. Some years later, as she looks back on her childhood, she is writing an application for a college scholarship, which asks about who she is. If I get accepted to this college, I will be thrilled, but it won't define me. My sense of who I am comes powerfully and happily from one single fact, that I am my mother's daughter. Imagine if your daughter is able to say that when she is a woman grown up independent and strong what would it take for that to be so wouldn't that be worth a while wouldn't that be worth a whole lot of time and care 
Wouldn't that just be amazing? In a nutshell, for better or worse, moms are the most powerful influence in a girl's life. This is because your role model, this is because you role model a very strong example of how to be a female human being. Just knowing this can cause you to re-examine a lot of the things you do. Especially important is how you role model relating to others, including her father, how you drive a car, how you speak about others. Everything you do becomes part of her. A big issue is the stress level you create in the home and in your life. You can literally set the stress levels in your daughter's body by how you set your own. Letting go is part of helping her grow. From the age of 16, she may at times want you not to crowd her too much. This doesn't mean you don't stay in charge though. Get it right with your daughter. Get to know her at a deep level and it will be a lifelong joy to you both. That was the end of chapter 12, Girls and Their Moms.